Let's see, make sure everybody's in. Cool. Thank you, <clears throat> folks, for coming. We're going to hop right in. We have a special treat today. Kelly is going to be leading us in the town hall. So very excited for that. Um, do have an upcoming master class um, starting September 10th, session one. Um, and it is entitled, Nothing's Wrong, The Radical Joy Cry of the Natural Great Perfection. That's a very radical joy cry indeed. Nothing's wrong. So you can kind of put that in your pipe and smoke it as Kelly goes. <laughs> I, I'm not I'm not advocating any type of smoking anything. That's a figure of speech, folks. Um, so <laughs> with that, I think that I will turn it over to Kelly and we'll see you after. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you, Pete. <laughs> Thank you for uh, taking care of us here in Zoom land. Good morning, everyone. So wonderful to see all of you again. So today um, I am going to attempt to talk to you about Rigpa and uh, more plainly, what are we actually doing? You know, what are we all doing here? Why are we meditating? Why Zochen? And what is in my experience, what is um, a way to access some of this that is not just intellectual, um, which is where I get caught up a lot, so I don't know about you. So I'm gonna to try to give you a different access point as pointed out to me um, by Lama Surya, as well as um, through teachings of uh, the Tukul Urjan Rinpoche. So hopefully um, it lands well. Let's get started here. <sighs> So I encourage you all to close your eyes for a moment and really arrive. Arrive on your seat. Arrive in your body. And allow yourself a moment to actually arrive. Notice if you need to shift your posture. Notice if you need a deep breath to shake off whatever it is you were just doing. Don't make any of it wrong. Just actually be where you are. Feel your seat on your seat. Feel the life force in your body. In your chest, in your heart rate. Your hands and feet. Surrender to this moment. There's nothing that you have to do. Not even listen. You don't even need to listen to me. Yield and surrender. And know that you've already shown up for yourself.
begin to settle into your breath. Pete, could you pull up that prayer book to page five? And again, you can chant along or not. We're gonna set our intentions for today's practice with the four immeasurable aspirations. May all beings possess happiness in the inner causes of happiness. May all beings be free from suffering and the inner causes of suffering. May all beings remain undivided from the sacred joy, which is free from suffering. May all beings come to rest in great peace and equanimity beyond attachment and aversion to friends, enemies, or strangers. Bless and empower us that our minds and hearts turn toward the Dharma. Bless and empower us that our Dharma practice becomes the path. Bless and empower us that the path truly dispels confusion. Bless and empower us that confusion itself dawns as primordial wisdom. And this is what I really want to focus on right now, those last few lines, that our practice becomes the path, and that, and I'm paraphrasing here, and that it allows us to dispel confusion. But what are we actually, what are we actually doing here? Yeah, right there. The path truly dispels confusion. The, pra the, pa the practice becomes the path, and that confusion itself dawns as primordial wisdom, primordial awareness. You know, when I've read these words, I've been practicing with Lama Surya now for, I don't know, 22 or 23 years at this point. And I've read these words over and over, and as you all know, on any given day in any given moment, they, all words and practices land differently. And these words in particular, I realize how quickly we can just intellectualize them. Yeah, the practice becomes the path and then the path dispels confusion and then, oh, awareness arises. But what does that actually mean and how do we get there? And what are we doing? What are we doing when we're meditating? What are we doing in any practice for ourselves and for all beings? <clears throat> Why do we meditate? Why are you here now? Why are you here listening to teachings? Why are we here together, doing this together? Pete, you can take this away for now. And you know, there's, we talk about meditation, and I remember one of the first teachings of lamas that I really sat with was, we don't meditate for the sake of meditating, right? We're not meditating to say we're a good meditator. And there has been many times throughout my years of practice that I really just wanted to be, get, be good at meditating. I wanted to be able to sit for longer. I wanted to be able to access different practices. I wanted to be able to sit and have more space between my thoughts. Um, and it turns out, it's not the point. It's not the point. So what is the point? All of the practices that we do, I'll say in general, but I'll speak to Zochen specifically. All the practices that we do are methods, access points to recognizing our true nature. They're all about giving us an opportunity to see who we really are, to glimpse our innate Buddhiness, to glimpse our pure perfection, 
that that was there before we've been conditioned to think or believe anything else. And so the Dzogchen practices, breathing, you know, whether they're talking about trekchud, sky gazing, cutting through, whether you're doing a, you know, concentration, which we don't really do in Dzogchen, opening into the natural awareness, devotional practices, guru practices, gratitude practices. And if you were here last week, uh, I love Lama Rogers teaching so much. Um, I'm always so grateful. I just, every time he teaches, I'm able to access something differently. And so he did a beautiful teaching and taking us through different access points of different kinds of meditation, different practices. So if you take all of those and all the things I just mentioned, the whole point is to get us to be able to glimpse. It's, it's the doorway, it's the threshold. It's not the, it's not the end, it's the means. It's the journey to get us to where we're trying to go, which is recognizing our Buddha nature. I like to picture, and, I, and I'll qualify most of what I'm about to say is, um, these are my interpretations of teachings I've received. So if things sound familiar, it's because they are, but they're not my words, I'm just channeling them through, uh, hopefully. <clears throat> So I like to think of all these practices as the, as the path. And when you get to the doorway, there's a big dark room. And when we're at that threshold and we're doing our practices, the, the beautiful outcome is that the sun shines in the room and you get a glimpse you get a glimpse of what was already there. So that darkened room was already there. It was already available to us. We just needed to flip on the light. We just needed to open the window. And the practices are the means to opening the window. It's all about cutting through our illusions, cutting through our delusions. And it's not something that we need to go and find outside of ourselves. It's already there. We're not asking you to put something on that is outside of you or to go on a treasure hunt to go find something that is not yours. It's about removing the layers and the obscurations to get to the essence of what has always been there. They're helpers. They assist us to see the truth. And recognizing our own nature doesn't mean that we are producing or fabricating anything. Um, I think it's Tukul Urjan who says, it's not like squeezing, trying to squeeze gold out of wood. So the best analogy that I've heard lately, <laughs> that was uh, or metaphor that I've heard lately that has really resonated me is about the sun. <clears throat> and so when you think about, right, we have our human selves and we have our divine selves. And the goal is to, in terms of the dualistic world that we actually live in, um, until we recognize that there, it isn't. So if we think about essence, our Buddha nature, and expression, our sentient being. So call my essence is Marme. That's my Dharma name. And my sentient being is Kelly. Who I really am is Marme. And I try to dabble with her, but I'm mostly Kelly. <laughs> Cause I, uh, I don't know if you are, but I'm not enlightened yet. So I'm, uh, I play around with her. Our essence, our Buddha nature is like the sun. Warm, ever present. It rises every day. It is everywhere, it's all pervasive. It's not just in the Eastern hemisphere. It's not just in the Western hemisphere. And if you want to expand that out, other galaxies have suns, right? The sun is all pervasive. That is our Buddha nature. That is our essence. Our expression is like looking at the sun's reflection on the lake. 
it's like looking at the sun's reflection on water. The reflection is there. You can see the sun and the water, but it doesn't warm you. It is not all pervasive. It is not everywhere all at once. It's an illusion. And it's not, it's not not there either, right? Right, the, the, the reflection of the sun is there until it's not. And I really love this metaphor because for me, it just dispels the mental gymnastics I have to do to think about, wait, who am I at my essence that's separate from who I am as a human. You know, Ram Das has this teaching where he talks about, he's like, you know, here I am, I'm Ram Das. I've found the Dharma and what a beautiful gift it is to be born into the human body and to have found the Dharma. And I have this very high expectation of myself to always be living Dharma. But I also realized that I was born as Richard Alpert. And so, there's probably something for me to learn by being Richard Alpert, right? So I, I like that because it lightens it up for me a little bit. It's like, okay, I don't have to be Marme all the time, but by the way, I can't, I don't know how to yet because I'm only getting the glimpses. So sometimes I'm the reflection of the sun and sometimes I'm the sun. And the methods of the recognition are we're gonna allow us to recognize it more of the time. That's the view. The action is being with that, it's the practice. And then the fruition is living it in our day-to-day -day lives and stabilizing it, stabilizing that view. Stabilizing and what the view is, the view is the recognition that we are all Buddhas. And this is, an, this is important. And not that some of us are more Buddha and less Buddha. Lama Surya Das, who I revere and love, isn't more Buddha than us. He's more, he's recognized his Buddha nature in a more stable way, much more stable way than, but just relatively, he's not more Buddha. The Dalai Lama is not more Buddha. The Drukpa is not more Buddha. But they have devoted their lives to the practices and the methods that have allowed them to realize their Buddha nature in a stable way. And this is one of the things that drew me to Buddhism in my life to begin with is, we are all Buddhas. You don't have to believe one thing or another thing or not believe one thing or another thing. We all, serial killers are Buddhas and Dalai Lama is a Buddha. And so when we try to enter a practice, the goal is to just be with what is. To recognize that there are multiple ways of, of entering that. Like next week, Pete's going to teach for us. And Pete helps me get to my Buddha nature through his music. So there's all different ways to access our Buddha nature. So I just want you to sit for a second. I just said a lot of words. And arrive again, if you need to. And picture the sun in the sky. And imagine that sun as your unmistakable, undiluted Buddha nature. And remember that without the sun, the reflection can't appear. So while it looks like there's only one sun, 
the reflection makes us think there are two. But if the water goes away, the sun is still there. So we have this opportunity to loosen our fixation, to loosen our fixation on the difference between the subject and the object. The subject is the sun. We are the sun. Our Buddha nature is ever present and luminous. So breathing in, and letting go. Allowing that light within to embody all of you. open, luminous, expansive, even if just for a moment. It's a moment nobody can take away from you. It's the jewel that lives inside of your heart, inside of your being. It is you. You can't lose it. Nowhere to get to, nowhere to go, just coming home.
Allow your thoughts to be like the clouds, coming and going, floating by. And just like a cloud, you can't grasp it, you can't hold it. It's fleeting, it's just a thought. Can't stop it from coming, and nor should you try. Just allow the coming and going, the rising and falling. in awareness. And like the sun, doesn't judge the clouds as good or bad or right or wrong. Just purely allows, allow all that is. And if you find yourself getting caught in judgment or criticism of yourself, of doing this well or doing this poorly, I encourage you 
as the sun to look upon your tender, loving self. The self that is doing its best to walk this path, to become aware of who and what you really are. Look upon that tender, critical self with a loving eye and drop that knife. Drop the knife you so often use upon yourself and maybe sometimes on others and surrender to all that is. Your humanity as well as your Buddha essence. Soften to yourself.
to break up the obscurations, to break up the thoughts. If you like, you can quickly move your eyes up and down, up to the sky and down to the ground and left to right. And take another deep breath and reset yourself. There's no prize for sitting perfectly still. Pete, if you could turn to page 11. Uh, <clears throat> to aid us in our path clearing. I'm sorry, that Padmasambhava's wish fulfilling, I guess it's page 13. Thank you. So aid us, aiding us in our path clearing is Padmasambhava. And to date still the chant that is most useful to me. Do soon Sanjay Guru in Poche. Nudru Kundak Dewa Chen Poja Barche Kunsel Dudu Drug Pusel So Chen Poja 
Parche kun sel du du drak po sel so wad ab so jin gi lap tu so chi nan sang we Ji wadang sampalun ji drupa jin ji lo. Precious guide, one with all the Buddhas of the three times, blissful presence and source of all spiritual accomplishments, fierce destroyer of illusion who dispels every obstruction. We pray to you for your blessing, inspiration, and realization. Please remove all outer, inner, and secret obstacles and spontaneously fulfill our aspirations. And let's see here, what should we do? The dedication of merit to universal enlightenment. Thank you. So nam di tam che zi pa ni tam ne ne pe dra nam pam je ne ke ga na chi ba la druk ba hi si pe so le dro wa dro wa shok. By the power of this meritorious practice, may the real enemies, our own projections and misdeeds, be overcome and sublime realization fully attained, so we may be free from the mis the miseries of birth, old age, disease, and death, the stormy waves of the ocean of samsara. And finally, with Lama Surya's New Millennium Prayer. May all beings everywhere with whom we are inseparably interconnected and who want and need the same as we do, may they be awakened, liberated, healed, fulfilled, safe, and free. May there be peace and harmony in this world and an end to war and violence, poverty and hunger, inequality and oppression, greed and cruelty, pandemics, famine, droughts, earthquakes, all kinds of natural disasters. May all be free from fear, harm, danger, anxiety, and insecurity. And may we all together complete the spiritual journey, one beloved community, one circle, one family, one son, all the way home. With deepest reverence and gratitude to Lama Surya for his dedication, his lifetime of dedication to practice and teaching so that we may all be here together. So what I'd like to do is open it up to questions. Um, you can either raise your hand or you can send a chat directly to Pete Zochen Foundation. Questions and sharing. So um, I don't wanna be the answers person either. Sharing of your experience or sharing of a practice that has helped you access a glimpse of your Buddha nature. We're all here together and, you know, just recognizing the beauty of we we're all born into this human birth, which is a rare gift. And here we all are uh, humans practicing the Dharma together, the rarest of gifts. So thank you for all being here and supporting mine and everyone else's practice together. So yeah, feel free to 
write it into the chat and I can ask it or you can uh, raise your hand and I think I'll figure that one out. Yeah, I'll look for raised hands too. You can literally just raise your hand. We're trying to, Fiona has her hand raised there, Pete. Oh, one second, Fiona, we just have to unmute you. two places to push. Thank you so much for your teachings, Kelly. Um, I got a lot out of the sun image that you gave me. I understood in a new way the difference between the reflection and the sun and the, because I'm a visual person, the idea that I see two suns and then when the water's dried up, there's that's there radiant the radiant sun is there always the other is the illusion and it was very powerful that that was it reached me in a way that I've, I've had the teachings with the mirror and the image is not the reality and so forth i didn't intellectualize it it really reached to me directly so i appreciate your teachings this morning they really helped me along my path thank you wonderful thank you fiona Thank you for being here. Hi, Glenda. Hi, Kelly. I just want to thank you for doing this. Oh, my. And Minla, Pete, the whole Zochen group. Oh, my. And this Sangha. Never, ever, ever would I have ever thought that you could open your heart and wake in your mind. But with a Zoom group. It's entirely possible. It's so beautiful, so beautiful. Now that sun, see what's happening is I'm, it's not me, it's this higher Buddha nature, Christ nature, whatever you wanna call it, is joining the outer sun with the inner sun. So there's no outer or inner. There's just one, there's just one. No matter that it looks, it can look bad in duality. No, no. It's all, it's all perfect, isn't it? Although we're guided what to do or say within the illusion, but I just want to thank you for doing this. And Lama Suri Das, his, oh my goodness, and Zochin.org. Ooh, thank you. That's all. And yay, thank you so much. Beautiful. You every week. We love your presence. Thank you. Right. Anyone else have anything they want to share or ask? We have some some chats coming of people being very grateful that are coming directly to me. So I'll convey that from those folks to you and to everybody here. Thank you. Yeah, love you all. Thank you for being here. And um, we look forward to seeing you again soon. Don't forget Masterclass, September 10th. Um, it's really special. It's a nice, small, smaller group and very intimate. So be well, go shine. All right. Thank you, everybody. I think we're trying to put this. Oh, that's not it. Yeah, master class again. Uh, why is this not allowing me to copy this? Okay. Uh, <laughs> September 10th. Um, nothing's wrong. The radical joy cry of the natural great perfection. So please come join us for that. I'm actually very psyched for that. That's that's going to be it's going to be good. Um, uh, the, the more Zochen the phrase, the better it, it hits these days. Um, <laughs> and also, please do donate if you can. We appreciate all your donations to keep the foundation running. Um, and yeah, we really appreciate the whole song and everyone for coming. So we will see you all soon. 
Please have a great Sunday, great rest of your weekend.